Hi, in this video what we are going to do is learn how to create a histogram using either the TI-83 or TI-84 graphing calculators. Um, the commands are the same for both of them, so you can use this instructional video for either the TI-83 or the TI-84. I am using the TI-84 plus color edition, um, so really as far as the buttons go, it's the same thing. There are a few minor things that are different, but for this situation it is the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit stat and option one, edit, and this is where we would put in all of our information. It brings up a spreadsheet screen. I tend to always use L1, and if I have two data sets, use L1 and L2, but it really doesn't matter uh, which ones you use. Just remember where you put your information. I already went through and put all of my information into L1. I could have just as easily put it in L2. Just to show you how to enter the data, all you have to do is hit 62 and enter, go to the next number, 67, and enter 75 and enter, and you would continue down until you filled out the entire list. Um, like I said, I went ahead and did it beforehand just to save time. You can delete or clear an entire list. You want to make sure that you hit the clear button and not the delete button because the delete button will actually get rid of it. Um, so we want to hit the clear button and enter and that would get rid of any information that you had in there. So if you're starting a new data set or you have new information that you want to put in, that's how you get rid of the information. Since I already have my information in here, um, we are going to find the class width and remember to do that and I'm going to hit second quit to get out of here. We do the maximum minus the minimum divided by the number of classes. I have chosen to do six classes for this one. So we could go through and we could find our maximum point and our minimum point or we can use the calculator to help us. It's not quite as easy as the Inspire. In the Inspire you can just type in max but what we would do is go to second and list and over to math. And option two is the maximum. So we can do the maximum of list one. So if I hit the second and the number one above it has L1, that tells me that it's gonna find the maximum for L1, which in this case is 75. And if I wanna find the minimum using the calculator, you can just go through and find this on your own if you would rather do that, that's fine too. Um, so minimum L1, enter is 52 and so the nice thing about the graphing calculator is you can hit the up arrow to go back and grab things so I can do 75 minus and I can up arrow again 52 and then just hit enter and we're going to divide this by our number of classes so in this case our number of classes is 6 and we end up with 3.833 and remember that instead of using the decimal we always round this up no matter what we always round this up so in this case, our class width would be four. So what I'm going to do is we're gonna start with our minimum, which is 52. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out because it's helpful to have this before we go to the histogram. So we will go back to the calculator in just a second. So our minimum value is where we start with the 52 and then we found our class width to be six. And then in case you haven't watched the previous videos, in case you forgot what that is, it is max minus min sorry, a class width is four, the number of classes is six, but in order to find this value, remember we do max minus min divided by the number of classes. So in this case, we ended up with our maximum was 75, our minimum was 52, and our number of classes is six. So I would take my class width, which is four, and remember that we always round up this value. Um, so our next class would start, we would start with the minimum or of 52, add the four to it, so our next one would be at 56, 60, 64, 68, and 72. If you remember, our upper class limit is found by doing one less than the um, next class. So we would have 55, 59, 63, 67, 71, and then remember we just add four to this to get to 75. Okay, so 
We now have our classes set up. We could go ahead and label our values in our graph that we're going to do. So this would be 52, 56, 60, and I'm choosing to do um, the lower class limit. This is the one that I like to do the most. And then the next one would start at 76. So remember it's everything from 72 up to that point. And always label what this represents. Remember that this is the age, um, the retirement age of professors. That way somebody looking at this will know that this data has meaning. If you know what the meaning of the data is, you always want to include that. Um, over here, remember that we are just going to use the frequency. I am just going to do a frequency one. Um, if you needed a relative frequency one, remember the only difference is we would label this as relative frequency. And instead of using our count, um, we would use our percents. I will fill this in in just a second. Let's use our calculator to help us fill this value in. So we're going to go ahead and come back to our calculator. If you like to, you can clear all the information. You can leave it in there. It really doesn't matter. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to create the histogram in the TI-84. So we're going to hit second and the Y equals. And before you do this, you may want to check your Y equals screen because I find a lot of times um, if students get an error, it's because they have something in here that is not allowable and it gives a domain error um, for your calculator. So always just check to make sure there's nothing in here. If you have it in here before you create stat plots, it really is best to check this and just delete anything that you don't need. So with this, again, we're going to do second y equals to get to plot one. We're going to use plot one. And what this does is it allows you to see the different types of graphs that you can make. Um, the first one that we want to do is we want to turn this on. And then we're going to go down and we want to go over to the one that looks like a histogram. So it's this one here. So we're going to choose the histogram. You have to right arrow over to it and then you would hit enter. And then it asks you which list. As long as you used L1, you're going to be fine. Okay. If we go directly to hitting graph after this, we notice that we don't see anything. There's really nothing there. Um, the easiest way to get it to a rough starting point is to hit zoom and go to zoom 9, zoom stat. And what it does is it adjusts the windows to what the calculator thinks is the best option. Um, this is a good starting point, but then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the window. The window changes where we want to see things, and we want to align this um, with our values that we have over here. So our X min is 52. Our X max, they ended at 78.83. Let's go ahead and just round that up to 80 just to make it a nicer number. And this is what we want to change. The X scale right here the X scale represents our class width. So our class width was four. They decided to count by 3.833, which remember was the divided by six. So they use the same number of classes, but they did it as a decimal instead of a whole number. It's better to do it as a whole number. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that. Um, the X max, I'm gonna go ahead and just go up to 12 just to give us a little wiggle room because we adjusted that. We may need it a little bit higher. Um, and then we're going to hit graph again and go back and see how it changes it. Okay, so now we have it nicely lit up. If you notice that now it lines up um, with the values before, it was a little off center. The nice thing about this is that you can hit the trace feature. And the trace will tell you the minimum of that class and the maximum. So the 52, it equals 52 is the minimum and the max is everything less than 56. And it tells us that we have one that fell in this category. Okay, and then if we go to the next class, we notice that we don't have any that fall in here. So we actually have a gap in the histogram and that's the only time that we should have a gap in our histogram is if we have zero that fall in that category. Okay, and we go over our next class, we have six that fall between 60 and 63. We have nine that fall between 64 and 67. We have six that fall between 68 and 72. And we have two that fall in our last category. So let me change this a little bit. Okay, so we have six that fall here. 
we have nine. So this would be our mode of our data. That's where the most frequency occurs. Six, and then the last one was two. Okay. So what we can do now is we can take that information and put it into our calculator. Since we go up to nine, I'm gonna count by twos. Okay, and so from 52 to 55, we have a total of one. From 56 to 59, we don't have any, so we would leave this one blank. Like I said, that is the only time that you wanna leave this blank. For the next one, we have a total of six. And you really don't have to color it in. I just color it in because it seems to look better. For the next one from 64 to 67, we have nine. So like I said, this one would be our highest. This would be our mode. We are back down to six for the next one. And then for our very last one, we have two. And this would really be roughly symmetric. Um, it's a very nice distribution. It's roughly bell-shaped. We have a little bit of difference here, but um, overall it is roughly symmetric. Um, for this, we still have the relative frequency column. Like I said, if you wanted to use relative frequency over here instead, uh, the TI-84 doesn't do what the um, TI-Inspire does where you can actually see the scales over here. So what we can do is we can go back to our lists. And I just wanted to show you another feature that you can do in here. If you have to do a lot of operations with things, I'm gonna go ahead and put the frequencies in here. So I have one, zero, six, nine, six, and two. And if we wanted to do the relative frequency category, what we can do is we can actually type commands into here. So we can take L3, remember to get relative frequency, it's our frequency divided by the sum of all of our frequencies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of the values that are in L2, so I'm gonna hit second and L2, and I'm going to divide them by the sum of L2. To get that, what I'm gonna do is second list, go over to math, and option five, the sum. So that was second stat, above it says list. And then choose option five, the sum. And I wanna sum L2. And then when I hit enter, it will automatically fill this in. So I get 0 0.0417. This one gives me 0 .000 because there wasn't any in that category. This one is 0 0.25, 0 0.375. This one is again the same thing with 0 0.25. And then our last one is 0 0.0833. So with this, like I said, this is just another way of helping you fill in the table is to use the aid of a graphing calculator. So hopefully this helped you to see how to create a frequency histogram. If we wanted the relative frequency histogram is what it was asked for. Remember that all we would do is change this scale over here to um, match the relative frequency and label it as relative frequency. As always, thanks for watching.